Hey everyone, I'm Wardy, and today we're talking about making sourdough starter care work for you because that's the point. You've got to make it work for you or it's not going to stick. I want to welcome you to Ask Wardy. This is the weekly show where I answer your questions about traditional cooking. I'm Wardy from Traditional Cooking School by Gnaufklins. Got a couple things to tell you up front. One is that if you're joining me on Facebook Live or Periscope, hello and welcome. Be sure to share your first name, where you're from, what you're sipping on in the comments. And if you're on Facebook Live, Millie is there pasting links and answering your questions as we go. I really appreciate you being here live. No matter what, if you're checking this out later or live, the transcript is ready for you. Just go to askwardy.tv. That link is right here askwardy.tv and look for episode 52. That's what we're doing today. All right, so if you all are ready, we're gonna get started. Here's the thing. You've gotta make this work for you or it's not gonna happen. This is true with anything in life, whether it's your menu planning, your laundry routine, your exercise, paying your bills, even taking care of your sourdough starter so that you can use it in recipes and actually love the results. So you've got to have a routine that works for you. And in my case, my routine has even changed over the years. So I am thrilled today to be sharing an answer to Vicki B's question, uh, cause she's following up with me on how things have changed for us over the years. So Vicki B's question is, I was just reviewing my sourdough e-course print materials. Wardy, you talk about your sourdough baking routine in there. You said you baked a lot all on one day at that time. And I'm curious as to how your baking routine has changed now that your household um, has switched to using einkorn primarily. And she says, I'm making the switch to using einkorn as well. Thank you so much. Well, that is what I'm going to share today. Um, all about my sourdough routine. But you know what? My sourdough routine is my sourdough routine. Um, and what I really want to do is answer Vicki B's question, but also help all of you find the routine that works for you, which is why we're going to cover not only um, a little bit about my sourdough routine, but two options for you to make it work for you. One is um, daily sourdough starter care, and the other would be weekly sourdough starter care. Um, here is the order of events today. First, I'm gonna share my routine. Then I'm gonna tell you the particulars about daily sourdough starter care, then weekly sourdough starter care. And because we're in particular talking about einkorn, I'm gonna follow up with answering questions that may come up for you like, what is einkorn anyway? So just hang on to that and then I'll have some free resources for you at the end, okay? So here we go. The first thing just to tell you is a little bit about my sourdough uh, starter routine. At the time that I released our sourdough e-course and our sourdough A to Z e-book, and there are links for you at askwardy.tv in this episode, or Millie is pasting them below. Well, my sourdough routine at that time, and this was, um, what, 2011? It involved storing our sourdough starter in the refrigerator for most of the week, and I would get it out for a once a week baking day. I'd feed it, build it up, and use it to bake a whole bunch of things, our bread, our rolls, English muffins, and a whole bunch of things on the weekend. So it's kind of batch cooking. Now, if you contrast that with Erin, who helped teach that class, she was the opposite. She had her sourdough starter out on the counter every day, she fed it every day, and she baked with it every couple days. So right away you're seeing here, a. Um, a daily versus a weekly, or as I said it, my weekly versus Aaron's daily routine. Now, since then, since that time, that was 2011, I have actually switched back and forth between daily and weekly, and it really depends on a couple things. Um, I've also gone exclusively to using einkorn flour, and I'll tell you more about that at the end. I wanna answer this question in particular first. So the way that I choose our care method really depends um, and by care method, I mean daily care of the starter versus weekly care of the starter, really depends on the season of the year and whether or not we're eating very many grains or breads at that time anyway. So examples for you, if it's summer, and during the summer we tend not to do that much baking or eating of breads, so the sourdough starter pretty much stays in the refrigerator. And I bring it out um, to feed it and build it up the night before I need it, which is occasionally every few weeks. 
and I bake with it and I put it back in the refrigerator. Again, I will tell you the particulars of this care in a bit. Right now I'm just going through my routine. Now, if it's winter and we're eating breads, sometimes we go light on, on breads or baked goods even in the winter, um, I will keep my sourdough starter out on the kitchen counter in a bowl and I will feed it um, twice daily and I'll bake with it every couple days. So you can see, and this applies to einkorn, whole wheat, spelt, whatever flour is using, really for us the routine depends on the season and how frequently I'm baking. And that's why I want to show you today how flexible this can be for you because the point is what I'm doing doesn't really matter if it doesn't work for you. I wanna give you plenty of examples and how to so that you can choose the sourdough starter care that works for you because the point is you want to use it. It's very healthy, it's a wonderful grain preparation, but if it doesn't work for you, it's not gonna happen and your family won't be enjoying the delicious baked goods. Okay, so uh, by the way, I do wanna point out that you're gonna find um, einkorn sourdough starter instructions with a free einkorn bread recipe that I have for you at tradcookschool.com slash free bread. You can take a screenshot of this if you'd like. Millie will also be pasting this link below the video. Okay, so here we go. Let's get into some specifics. And we're gonna start with, I've already shared my routine, we're gonna get into daily starter care, okay? So, talking about daily sourdough starter care, I'm gonna answer uh, pretty much two main questions, okay? what this is, so you know what we're talking about, and two, why would you choose this method? I'm gonna go deeper into what I've been telling about our routine. So what this care method is, it is where you keep your sourdough starter out at room temperature on your counter in a bowl or a jar. You cover it by a cloth or a plate or a loose lid, I prefer a plate, and in the summer when there's fruit flies, what I actually do is line uh, I put a, like a cloth napkin between the plate and the bowl, so fruit flies are not getting in. But this is a loose cover because sourdough starter needs oxygen. So it's just loosely covered whether it's a bowl or a plate. And I prefer a bowl, and the bowl size is really, um, you know, how much starter are you building up? How much do you need for your recipes? Uh, you know, this is a good size. You have to look at the video to see this, but this is a good size for most days. But if I'm doing a lot of baking and I need a lot more starter, like for a big batch of bread or something, I will move it into an even larger bowl. Anyway, regardless of your container, regardless of what flour you choose, you should feed it twice daily with flour and water, and even more if it's warmer temperatures. This needs to keep it, this is needed to keep it active and strong. Because it's at room temperature, the organisms, you know, the friendly yeast and bacteria that make up this starter, they are constantly eating food and therefore their food source needs to be replenished frequently to keep the starter alive. So twice daily feedings. Now that's what this method is, daily care. And twice daily feedings, don't be overwhelmed by that. It's really easy, a little bit of flour and water, and I tend to use more flour than water uh, so it'll stay on the thick side. Okay, why choose this method? I just told you what it was, now why choose it? Well, this is for the person who bakes with sourdough every day or every few days. It's really helpful to have your sourdough starter on hand for whenever you need it. Now, this question is, the next question I'm gonna address is related and it comes up a lot. And I have a feeling it's coming up in the comments right now, if I could see them. Um, people are saying, I'm feeding it, but what if I don't use it? Am I wasting it? How do I know how much to feed? Well, I'm gonna refer you to a previous Ask Wardy where I discussed this. I talked about um, this concept that I call daily maintenance feedings. Um, the point is your starter is being fed twice daily and kept going strong all while you are not being overrun by more starter than you can use because that would be wasteful. So go back to Ask Wardy episode 18 for that. AskWardy.tv and scroll back to episode 18 and you'll hear all about my daily maintenance feedings so that you have the right amount for your baking, not too much, not too little, 
and you can bake with it every few days. I've actually heard from dozens of people since that Ask Wardy episode came out, members, subscribers, podcast listeners, that that episode has completely made sourdough work for them because it was hit or miss. They fed too much, they fed too little, they didn't have what they needed. And this concept of daily maintenance feedings um, made sourdough click, okay? So if you are a daily feeder, a daily starter feeder, askwardy.tv, episode 18, okay? Now, let's talk about the next thing, which is weekly starter care, which I tend to do in the winter, or I tend to do, sorry, which I tend to do in the summer, or when uh, we're just not having very many baked goods. Again, two things to go over here, what it is and why you might choose this method. So what this care method is, you're keeping a small amount of sourdough starter, like a half cup or a quarter cup, such as I have in this little um, pint jar. You're keeping it in the refrigerator and it's covered or, and or airtight, okay? Prior to storing it, you should have fed it so that it's going into the refrigerator with a food source. Um, the organism activity is gonna slow down greatly in the cool temperatures, but the yeast and bacteria are still going through their feeding and multiplying and dying life cycles, so they need a food source. All of that requires food, even though it happens at a much slower rate. So store it when it's been just fed or within a few hours of a feeding. Um, and if you have a lot of sourdough starter, you know, you only need to store a half cup or a quarter cup or a cup. Just a small amount is all you need. Now, when you're ready to bake with it, such as like on a weekly baking day or every few weeks, you're going to bring it out of the refrigerator and you're gonna use it in baking. So that means you would transfer it to a bigger bowl or jar, such as the one I have sitting in front of me, and then you're gonna feed it enough flour so that you build it up to the volume you need, but also refreshes it and brings the organisms back to a height of activity. It may take, depending on how long it's been stored, you know, a week, a few weeks, it actually may take a few feedings so it to bounce back to normal activity. So you want to plan accordingly so that you have plenty of time to refresh it to good activity. The other thing is, um, is if you need a huge volume of starter for baking day, it's better to plan for two or three feedings prior to using it so that you can uh, feed it in incremental amounts of flour instead of a ton of flour at once, okay? Now, regardless of which flour you feed it, your starter only needs to be brought back out of the refrigerator every few weeks for a feeding, and then it can go back in. Now, if you don't need to bake, you can still bring it out and feed it and put it right back in. It does need regular feedings. Now, I'm just gonna say here that I have actually experimented with keeping a sourdough starter in the fridge for months, and I was able to bounce it back in just a couple feedings, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. I'm pointing it out only so you don't feel scared um, you know, that you've forgotten and neglected it, is it any good anymore? It very well might be good if it's been in the fridge for a couple of months. However, the ideal is that it's a week or two or three that it's kind of dormant in the fridge that you bring it out to refresh it. Bring it out to refresh it with food whether or not you bake with it, okay? So that is how um, this care method works of weekly feeding and you could say um, slash bi-weekly slash monthly you know you could stretch it out but it's a it's not a daily care schedule um, that's how it works I should say one more thing when you do have it out when it's not in storage you do need to revert to the daily method of twice daily feedings okay so you need to care for it when it's out of the refrigerator working for you then you put it back and you can go back to the dormant uh, cycle feedings why would you choose this method? Well, it's because you're baking with sourdough only weekly or bi-weekly or monthly. Why have a starter out that needs twice daily attention if you're not using it that often, right? Again, you gotta make this work for you. And some people feel the pressure of, oh, well, the really good bakers um, have their sour, they have three sourdough starters out on their counter and they feed them twice a day. And, oh, I'm a terrible cook if I, miss or I don't have that many starters, you know, forget that kind of stress. If you're only baking once a week with it, 
put it in the fridge. You don't need to have it out all the time. That's a waste of time and energy, potentially flour too. You've got to make it work for you. I know I keep repeating that strain, but that is the point of what we're talking about today is sourdough starter care that actually works for you so that it can bless your family with good foods they love to eat and you don't feel guilty or neglectful or like you're failing. There's no need to fail. This can be a tool that works for you instead of a burden. So, we have covered my routine with some examples. I've talked to you about daily sourdough starter care where it's out at room temperature, twice daily feedings. I've also told you about weekly sourdough starter care slash bi-weekly slash monthly where you keep it in the fridge and kind of dormant, still alive, and you bring it out to use it for, you know, infrequent baking days. Now, uh, this question came up because Vicki was not only, you know, asking about the time that's passed since our sourdough e-course, but since that time we've gone to using exclusively einkorn. And she wanted to know, um, you know, if einkorn has affected this. Well, my change in routine has mostly been affected by the seasons and how much baked goods we eat, uh, not necessarily einkorn, but einkorn was part of the original question. and. You may be here listening because you want to know about, you know, the different ways to keep, keep feed for a sour feed a sourdough starter and you're like einkorn, what's einkorn? You know, tell me more about that or, you know, um, clear this confusion so I know what you're talking about. So, I've answered Vicky's question, but I'm going to go along to this corollary question now, which is what's einkorn? I'm happy to explain it. Einkorn is amazing. It's a 5,000 year old variety of wheat, but you know, age is one thing. It's 5,000 years old, so what? Well, you should consider it for more than its age. Here are the reasons, and these are truly healthy reasons. Number one, it's got less gluten than modern wheat and a gentler form of gluten. Number two, it's got less starch than modern wheat and it's got an easier to digest, less problematic form of starch. It also behaves differently than wheat um, or even other ancient grains like spelt. That's why I have a whole class on it. So if you look in the links below this video or podcast, you will see a link to our Einkorn e-course that's included with your membership in Traditional Cooking School by Ganaufglins. Um, you also see a link to our ebook and video package. Anyway, it does behave differently. That's why we have a whole class on it. And in particular, when you're starting your own einkorn sourdough starter or transitioning a starter to einkorn, you want to pay attention to its different peculiarities. Um, if you're interested in that, I actually have a freebie for you. Um, if you go to tradcookschool.com slash free bread, you're going to get my free no need artisan sourdough einkorn bread recipe, but included with that is how to start um, an einkorn sourdough starter and or transition an einkorn sourdough starter. Okay, so tradcookschool.com slash free bread. You'll also find this link below the video or at the show notes at askwardy.tv. Um, so it's got less gluten and a gentler form of it. It's got less starch and an easier form. Our family in particular has had wonderful health results when using einkorn over modern wheat. And just one example of many is that I have been a seasonal allergy sufferer for most of my life. Um, but several years ago went on the GAPS diet and then never returned to modern wheat, except for a test now and then. And if I return to eating modern wheat, my allergies come back. If we bake with einkorn, they don't. So I have been allergy free for several years now. And this is a big part of it, this einkorn. It also tastes great. Um, it's as versatile as wheat. You get really good results once you learn the peculiarities. Um, the bread recipe I was telling you about, I have a picture for you, um, is a bread that we all love and that my husband, in fact, has said is the best bread he's ever had. So there's a picture of it. And you can get this recipe. It's a no need sourdough artisan bread recipe at tradcookschool.com slash free bread or just look for the links below. Um, we just love einkorn. I also have links for you. I know people are gonna ask, where do you get it? Um, it is more expensive if your health um, demands that you get off modern wheat for whatever reason or you just value the ancient varieties of foods rather than modernized um, foods that have been changed then it may be worth it to you to seek out a good source. So our favorites are um, einkorn from ancient grains or jovial foods. There are links below this video or at the transcript. 
Okay, so covered a lot of ground. We've gone over the two ways to care for a starter. I've told you more about einkorn in case it was totally new to you. Um, and I wanted to round up with free recipes and instructions, um, which is again, tradcookschool.com slash free bread, where you can uh, learn how to make this amazing no need einkorn sourdough bread, as well as get my instructions for doing a sourdough starter with einkorn. Okay. Well, um, as I wrap up here, I'm just gonna let you all know that I'm gonna be watching the comments at the show notes as well as on Facebook and Periscope to answer any questions. Millie has been doing it all along. Thank you so much, Millie. I am so thrilled you've all been here to join me for Ask Wardy. I love answering your questions, and if you wanna submit a question for a future episode, use the hashtag Ask Wardy. Handle is at Trad Cook School on Twitter, or you can email me. Wardy, W-A-R-D-E-E -E, at askwardy.tv. God bless you all, and I'll see you again in a week.